them, my my team, <laughs> they were so good to me. And for my birthday, gave me a um, spa day. And I, you guys know I'm always busy and I'm always doing something, so I never took the time to do it. So, like, Lakeisha scheduled it in my schedule, and I tried to cancel it. She wouldn't let me. <laughs> She made me go do a spa day. And so I was like, oh. And then I got in there and I fell totally asleep. And I was locked. I was knocked out while they're doing deep tissue. How do you do that? I could hear myself snoring. Anyway, TMI. <laughs> so, you guys, I was just sitting here thinking about the prophets. And, the um, you know, I was in there just praying in the spirit. And um, I was just like, do we give good afternoon, Gail. Hi, Tawana. Hi, Lakeisha. Hi, Emily. Uh, hi, Kia. Thank you guys for sharing, too. Uh, oh gosh, you guys, I didn't even know I deserved it. Like that was like, whew, that was amazing. Now I'm like, now I gotta work. <laughs> um, do prophets have room for error? Do people really give prophets room for error? Like, and can, can prophets make a mistake? I was thinking about, you know, I wanted to have that discussion with you guys because, you know, um, there's a lot of demand all throughout the Bible. The more I'm studying the prophetic and the life of prophets, and how God does nothing without speaking to his prophets first. And how he calls a man like Abraham out of out of his family and shows him things. And how he speaks to people. Um, how, can be, is there room? Can be, do people miss it? And the truth is, is I remember I was in prophetic school and Prophet Lovi was having us uh, pray for one another. And he was like, hey, don't be afraid to tell them that they missed it and that's not accurate. It's good. That'll sharpen them so they can know that, hey, that's not, that, that's not learning how to hear the voice of the Lord. And, um, but people always say, oh, you know, if their word doesn't come to pass, they're a false prophet. That is not an indication of somebody being a false prophet, really, because you know, they're psychics and psychics give, give, uh, give accurate, uh, psychic readings that's them operating a certain level of dimension but they they never could operate in the dimension where they're able to locate certain things specifically so you know that because you can look at like even when the the wise men found Jesus they were able to locate exactly the spot where Jesus was because he was guiding and directing him specifically so God can guide you and direct you into like a secret place where the enemy does not know what's going on Herod was looking for like a two-year span and killing everybody just to find him so you see the nature of the enemy me and to see the nature of the Lord and even the soothsayers, the soothsayers and the, the fortune tellers and the magicians, they were right alongside David, uh, Daniel. So we see that in the Bible, but they could not do what he could do. If you look at David, hallelujah, because this is what's coming upon you guys. This is so important. If you look at David and Daniel, excuse me, I meant Daniel. I didn't mean David. Daniel, hi daughters. Look at my daughters and my beautiful kids. Um, Daniel, literally, they, they, they were going to kill because the soothsayers, magicians, and those guys, they were going to kill them. He was going to kill them. He said, I'm not going to tell you my dream because you guys are going to lie. So, he said, I've come to myself unless you tell me my dream. The, the, and he says, no man on earth can do that. <laughs> this is where the prophetic is good, right, you guys? No man on earth can do that. Somebody seeing you do miracle signs and wonders, and they're saying, no man on earth can do that. <laughs> and so Daniel's like, why are they going to kill everybody? He's like, ah, go ask him for three days. He got his friends to fast and pray. While he fasted and he prayed, Daniel fasted and prayed because no man had ever done it before. Does it mean it can't be done? So he says, you guys fast and pray. I will get an answer. He was certain he could hear from God. He was certain in his relationship with God that God would tell him. Had he did it before? No, not that we know of, but we know what God did. God answered him and he tells him the dream that this man dreamt. And we said the same thing with, with uh, Joseph. Joseph comes and tells him the dream that he dreamt and the meaning, and he gave him strategies and solutions. Those are the things that magicians, soothsayers, uh, palm readers, all the demonic stuff that we are not supposed to, not allowed to do, that unlock to the, the relationship with the occult and invites the enemy in. You're not allowed to do that. Those things were in a demonic realm. They only go to a certain dimension. They could not go to the dimension where Daniel went. So you guys will do things that no one has done and greater 
because he went to the Father, because he's in you and he's evolving. You picked up where he left off and now you can go greater in the prophetic and in the Lord. Thank you for your share, uh, that Michelle and Lakeisha and Kia. Thank you for your shares, you guys. This is such an awesome topic because the Lord desires you guys to do greater. He wants to give you specifics. He wants to. So, what happens when you miss it? Well, first of all, we know a few things about the prophetic. We know that Samuel, thank you, Nina, for your share. We know that Sam, the prophet Samuel, didn't start off prophesying everything where all his words didn't hit the ground. We know that. How do you know that? Because it took a, pro, a man named Eli to unlock him and teach him about the prophetic. Well, I thought he was a born prophet. He is a born prophet. He heard God's voice. He just didn't know it was God's voice. So he had to get into the relationship and intimacy with God. My son did a one-on-one -on -one with some children that were seeing some demonic spirits and they were scared and um, he prayed for them and they no longer had an issue. Now, this is really amazing because my son, my son um, Isaac says, he says, well, mom, I'm gonna talk, I'll talk to the kids. I'm going to pray for them. But they have to have a relationship with the Lord Jesus. I thought it was so awesome for him to say the things he said. Like last night in Sunday school, this lady came and she said, uh, she said, she said, your son. I said, I know. <laughs> she says, he says the most wisest things for an 11 year old. I was like, I know. I, I don't know what to do with this kid. Like he, he understood that the relationship with God, how God could do more for you and tell you more and warn you more and and, spe and specifically God is trying to warn a lot of us but we have so many other things we're going to sleep to so many things we're watching on TV so many distractions people are arguing and fighting they have strife those things like sometimes you are not able to hear as clear because sometimes he comes in just a still small voice it's not like hey I'm speaking to you you know but we do know that that Saul turning to Paul turned God heard God audibly he heard the voice and it said the people that were with him did not hear the voice but they saw a light thank you Roderick for your share hallelujah we want to share this because most people need to understand that the prophetic is something you can grow in most people need to understand that prophetic is trained most people need to understand it has to be unlocked okay so when Elijah saw Elisha he told him come follow me Elijah <laughs> kills the calf so he can't even go back to it burns the stuff or whatever and then he comes with him we know he didn't start off doing it and then after he left thank you Drinker, for your share that he did even greater after Elisha the prophet goes up and the Lord takes him up in a whirlwind he got the double portion so when he left he grew greater so we have to give prophets time to grow you can mess up he could, I mean, you can. You can mess up. It is allowed for you guys to make a mistake in the prophetic. People say, oh, you're a false prophet. That is not what dictates that you, you're a false prophet. It just means you're learning the voice of God. So you know what? There's times I've had to like take a chance of making, I would hear things, but I didn't know what I was hearing properly. Like a prophet Lovi and somebody else had to come. A prophet, first, a first prophet taught me, but then I grew, right? So I matured to a place where for about like five years especially I knew I went to a church but I knew that wasn't home for me I went there and when I left the church as soon as I came to Revelation Church I knew this was my church home this is my place to be trained this is my place to grow this is my great my, my place to advance this is my place that um, I had uh, you know a God God was gonna train me and everything I knew it I knew it was home I knew it and so when I got there I got unlocked to a whole nother level. Remember, we have the keys to the kingdom of God. And whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Not, oh God, I need you to deal with the devil. I need you to bind the devil. God's like, I told you, I, I, are you listening to my word? How well you to know me? I can't. I already gave you that power to do it. Not, not that he won't. He can't. Because he said, I gave you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. He said, for he who does my will... He says, and overcomes the enemy. And Revelations, the third chapter, 21st verse, will sit with me on my throne. So you have to be an overcomer. I have to be an overcomer. And that requires that we sometimes may miss it. So look at the prophets who made mistakes and God bounced them back. King David, the Bible says that David is a prophet. So we know that David is a prophet. He heard God's voice. He even put on the ephod. He inquired of the Lord in 1 Samuel, the 30, 31st chapter. You can read about that when they when they came and raided Ziglag and, and, and then they they stole them and took them away and his men started, thought of stoning him. It says, even his men who thought of stoning him, that's why you don't put your trust in people too much. They could turn on you in a heartbeat. They then, 
he inquired the Lord. He, he heard from God and God, he asked God two questions. Shall I pursue them and will I recover? And God told them, you will pursue them and you shall recover all. So we know that. But David, wait a minute. What about David? Did David make mistakes? We know he was a sinner. He sinned. We know he made mistakes. We know that he's a, he lied in the middle of his relationship with God. You know, people like to tell about what they did before they got delivered, before they got set free, before. But the during part where you made mistakes, where you fell off, where you lied, or you missed, made a mistake, or you gave a word. And you know what? It was, it, it might have been just the beans you ate last night that something appeared or a movie that you saw and it appeared to your mind i'm just saying we have to give room for people to grow and so you know um i love when people tell me oh yeah that's accurate that's accurate that's accurate that's awesome but you know there's probably times that i i i'm sure there's times i missed it i'm sure that there's times i just did i just didn't didn't get it and there's times i almost doubted myself and the people text me back and said i know exactly who you're talking about i know exactly who that name is i mean i just even heard heard this awesome testimony um from Emily about I was pro did a one-on-one -on -one with her and I I told her I said about it I said anybody got a red car I see an accident you need to pray against this and God's telling you you're gonna hear about it but don't worry it's gonna be okay so you know she earnestly took that word and she began to fight for her family and pray for her family how awesome is this so her husband almost has an accident, I think it was yesterday, and, and I posted it on my page when she posted it, and it was a red car, and it almost, it almost hit him. See, that prayer that she had, it stopped the whole process. And I'm going to tell you something that I heard, um, what was that, Kenneth Hagin who told this story? Let me see, I read a lot of books. Um, maybe, okay. So whoever it was, it was a great story. I know the story because I remember the testimony. There was one man where um, the wife got up and prayed. So she was, she was praying in the middle of the night, intercession. She didn't feel right. She said, somebody's about to have an accident. It's fatal. And so she kept praying. She kept praying, but she didn't want to wake up her husband. She kept praying. She kept praying. She didn't want to wake up her husband. And so all of a sudden, the husband said, what is going on? You, you're just praying so much. You're praying. And she said, I feel like it's fatal. It's somebody. He said, well, let's go and pray until God gives us a, us a release. So they prayed together, and he said, "Is somebody at work, they're supposed to have an accident. So it's somebody in their church. They didn't know who. God didn't tell them who, but they had to pray and intercede till it stopped it. And I believe that's what em and em Emily, she took the prophetic word, and she covered her family. She didn't. We didn't even know who it was. We just knew red car accident. And she covered her family, and the kids knew, and they were praying. So like this man, the husband and wife, they prayed, and they said, okay, we have a release. Well, the next day, this man said that his uh, they, that that um, that morning that he had a dream. Um, he got to work, and the boss says, "Hey, uh, can you go over here? I want you to cover cover this guy over here because he's not here today. I want you to get up there and do his job." And he said, "No, I can't do that." He said, "Why not?" He said, "Because I had a dream last night that my head got cut off, and I shouldn't do it. And God told me not to." And the guy was like, "God, uh, I, God doesn't talk like that." This other guy jumped in and said, "I'll do it. I'll get up there and I'll do the job." And do you know that something went wrong and the wire cut the man's head off just exactly and that would have been him, but that was their, their, their church member. So you, you got to really begin to listen to the father. And so what if I was scared to give that word? There's times I didn't want to speak words. There's times I've grown into this thing. Like when I got unlocked with, in, in, with my new church in the last year and a half, I've grown in the prophetic. I didn't know where I couldn't, I couldn't call names before. And people say, oh, it's names and numbers. No, God doesn't give names and numbers for sure. He gives names and colors and, and cars and phone numbers because he's trying to help people. I watched him I watched him call people and say they need healing right now. I watched him say, hey, we need to dial this number. And they dialed the number and the person was doing exactly the thing the prophet said. You know, God is a locator. Like they located Jesus. God wants to train you in these things. So can you miss it? Absolutely. Is it okay? Yes, it's okay. Doesn't mean you're a false prophet if you drop a word here or there. Now, let's talk about sin. Oh, you're the first thing that always says, oh, D David is a false prophet because he said David is not a false prophet because he said a prophet is a prophet. You still a prophet in sin, out of sin, whatever. You can still get a prophetic word. How do you know that, Taryn? Well, in first Kings, the 13th chapter, one, one, one prophet got another prophet, went and lied to another prophet and that prophet got killed behind these words. So they're both prophets, but one was crooked. So you can be a prophet but that. You have to have enough prophetic wisdom to know when a prophet has gone off the deep end <laughs> that requires character you have to look at the character 
you and your pastor has gone off their deep end and they're no longer when Saul who was anointed is no longer anointed man this is a good word if you guys don't share this word I don't even know where God is pulling this out of my spirit you guys he was a great king at one point and then he began to fall off you have to discern when your leaders or whoever has has fallen off what did Paul said he said follow me as I follow Christ. What he's saying is, if you see me falling off, you stay with Christ and you let me do my foolishness because you can't follow me in my foolishness. That's what Paul was saying. Follow me as I follow Christ. Because Saul was a good man at one point in time doing the will of God. It said he was humble and God raised him up. And then the next thing you know, he's trying to kill David. He's killing people. He's doing things that are out of his character. When the, when, when, the, when the anointing has left them and they traded in their anointing for a position, they traded in their anointing. That's what Saul did. He traded in his anointing for a position. He traded it in for fame. He traded it in for money. He traded it in when David wanted the heart of the Lord. David was like, give me Jesus. A song says, give me Jesus. I, I don't want anything in this world as long as I have Jesus. Give me the one that my, my soul delights in. Give me the one one who, who's got me, who's going to keep me, who's going to, no matter what, I got him. You have an intimate relationship. You're one with him. He is yours and you are his. But Saul didn't have that. Remember I said yesterday, Saul got it so easy. He just was a lord of king. See, David worked for that. David was faithful out in the sheep. David was faithful when he was nothing. David was, David was like, so he loved the Lord with all his heart, but he fell. And so people can get off track. And then when they get off track, the Bible commands us in Galatians 6 and 1 to gently restore somebody. Like when people come to me, it's the best thing when they come and say I've sinned. They, it's the best thing when they come to me and tell me they've messed up. I had people come to me and, and tell me about adultery before. And I was like, okay, so what we need to do is this to get you on the right track. I've had people come and talk to me about the craziest things, you guys. I mean, I've heard it all. I don't even judge at all because I understand the nature of man. And the nature, if you don't have Christ, that you can fall off at any moment. So you need his grace to keep you because you need to stay humble and keep your cloak of humility on. Because the second we start feeling puffed up, that's when we start to fall. So, so, so David didn't go out to time a battle, which means you, you didn't, maybe you stopped praying because you arrived somewhere. Maybe you stopped seeking the Lord and you stop doing these things. And so now you're not hearing from Christ as much. And now jealousy creeps in and bitterness is destroying your vine. And so here we have Saul who used to be right and now he's not right. And people can see through his character and his actions. He can't even keep his word. Oh, David, come back. I see you. Okay, you, you could have killed me. My son, come back with me. I will not harm you. Next thing you know, he's searching for him again. He can't even keep his word. Why are you searching for a man that's not even looking for you? Why are you coming after a man that didn't harm you? Why are you coming after a man that, that loved you and still loves you? And the only reason David was so right to be king because he understood the heart of God and he was submitted under that man and he still did not harm him. He could not harm him because his heart was right. That's the kind of heart that we have to have. We have to have a good heart and a good spirit. So can a, can a prophet have room for error? Yes. Are they perfect? Yeah. No. No. Matter of fact, like prophets are usually real creative and kind of all over the place sometimes. They need the rest of the body to hold it together. The pastor has the most awesome position and he needs the most prayer and love because he's the one that the apostle brings them to the pastor. The evangelist brings them to the pastor. The teachers are bringing it. The teachers are bringing them in. And the prophets, we give words, and you might not see us for a while, but the pastors, you want a good person. But I do, like, you can have a pastoral anointing on you as a prophet. So I'm a pastor, but I'm a prophet too. So I care for my sheep. I care for those. I will leave the 99 and go get the one because that is in my heart to do. So you hope that a prophet that just that you're, you're submitted under has a shepherding heart where they will care for you. Amen? And, and be concerned for you and love you and know you and you can be honest with and if you fall you don't have to act like you're perfect because I'm definitely not acting like I'm perfect I make mistakes all the time and gosh thank God because it wasn't in my my perfect perfection that I have grown to this place it was in my mistakes and when I wasn't sure and you know what we as prophets are the same way like we have to rely and trust on God for a word just like you do 
I mean, God isn't just telling us everything. Sometimes God can tell me what's in somebody's closet. He can tell me where people were. He can tell me what's going on. And then I'm praying like, Lord, I, I, I'm praying for my own revelation. I want to know what I should be doing in my life. And so I have to believe God for a word just like you have to believe God for a word. I have to stand, uh, stand in prayer just like you have to stand in prayer. I have to honor God just like you have to honor God. There is no big eyes and little U's. We're all a part of the body of Christ. So I want you guys to be really encouraged today and know that we have to have grace with people. We have to have grace for understanding and we have to have grace to know how the people grow. And so we look at Joseph and Joseph got it together later. Joseph got it together when um, he, he didn't start off being able to interpret dreams. If, otherwise, he would have never told his brothers what he was doing. You know, he grew into that. You have to grow into it. Saul, uh, uh, here you have Samuel. He grew into the prophetic where none of his words hit the ground. If they make a mistake and open, don't worry because they love God and God is going to help them. So gently restore them. But true prophets have to have the ability to handle difficult situations biblically. You have to do it with wisdom, like Solomon. If somebody brings something to you, you got to be able to nip it in the bud. You have to be able to learn how to handle situations. You have to learn how to correct, correct, even if it's a harsh correction, within love, where you don't cut people and leave them there to bleed. You have to know how to restore people back to the Lord. And I think that's an awesome thing when you can learn how to restore people properly and love people. Amen. Oh, ha, Felicia said Fruit Loops. Oh, yeah. God was telling me one day, I think he was just doing it for her. And we were doing a one-on-one -on -one and God started telling me everything that she was like dove. The dove soap was right in front of her. Her daughter's shoes, the color of them. Uh, and then she said, oh, what else? The Fruit Loops that hurt her husband, hurt the son. And them. They're, they they, you know, they love these Fruit Loops. And God was just giving her so many things. But he wasn't doing it for me. He was doing it for her. But at the same time, he was doing it for me because he keeps telling me he's sharpening my gift. He's sharpening what I know. He's sharpening me as a pro as a prophet. So, I want you guys to grow in the prophetic and the things that God has for you. And be grow in the gift God has for you. I mean, you can become a perfectionist at some things. And you can be uh, uh, and operate in a spirit of excellence. You can become better. Meaning like, okay, if you're piano, you play a piano, you start off with chopsticks. And next thing you know, you're playing Fear Elise. Because you have practiced so much and you're so good. It becomes real easy in your life. So, when people see you, they should see your growth. Like when I go to my meetings in Oregon, I go to my meetings, the growth is following. Because the people that knew me before are like oh my goodness now I remember when I first got saved and delivered one of my friends Yvette was like oh my goodness what has happened to you she saw me in three months and I was totally different I was changed I was I was I was such a different person but now when those people see the see the operations of the Lord the people that even see me since then they're like whoa and now they're growing so it's an impartation I can't give you what I don't have I'm growing every day I'm thinking even when I was in the spa a guy was telling me talking to me about reading reading um proverbs uh you know the uh, the 30th chapter and and i was just like okay lord i was like what are you going to show me now because he's been unlocking the mysteries of the kingdom my people have been having dreams they're having visions they're walking in power and authority i even had that scripture from yesterday about luke 9 and 1 that he gave them all power to drive out all demons and all diseases so they had the, the diseases and power were their limitation then they got a level anointing level later on look at peter he grew to where his shadow began to heal people. May your shadow heal people. May you walk into this growth that God has for you and not be afraid to make a mistake. I don't want to say something because I might make a mistake. I'm sure I've made plenty of them. But you know what? It doesn't matter about the, it doesn't, it doesn't have any balance on the people who have been healed, set free, the, the demons that have been cast out, delivered, whole, and their lives have been changed, and they've been warned before destruction. Thank you, Cher, for your uh, for your share sharing, Cher. <laughs> and so, all of you who are giving, thank you too for giving and remembering our ministry, and for praying and for connecting with our our newsletter. I want you guys to know this is your season of growth. Grow, 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 grow. And if people don't like it, it's okay. They might have to go. But you're going to grow in the Lord. I want you guys to, to experience the fullness of the Lord. Don't put a cap of limitation when God wants you to take you to an amazing level. Hallelujah. Don't worry about making a mistake. Don't don't let it hold you back and hold your mouth back. There's times I was sitting there and I'm telling you, I, I mean, I, I was at, at Roxanne's and I said to a lady, uh, and I said to a lady, uh, I said, I see a whistle. 
she went like this and pulled a whistle. There's she had a jacket and everything on. She pulled a whistle right out, and everybody was like, "Oh my goodness!" I was sitting there, and I also, hi son, hold on, I'm doing a live. Okay, I'll call you right back, baby. <laughs> so, um, I, then I was holding the lady's hand. And I started looking this way, and I said, Jean, Jean, somebody's name is Jean. I'm looking for a woman. The man's name was Jean. You know, he was blowing me away. And then I felt more confident and bolder as God has used me. And you began to say, that's what you're showing me. That's what you're showing me. And you begin a certainty where you know that you know that you know. And you can hear the still small voice. You can use the eye of your brain that he shows you. He begins to show you an image of something. All of a sudden, you begin to automatically think about your, your sister. And the person's name is the same name as your sister. God will use your experience to help you grow into the things of the prophetic to show you, hey, you're on, you're on track. So you can't be fearful. You just ask questions. I love when I, Rick Joyner's ministry, they taught me to ask things like, you know, I feel like the Lord is saying this. Or do you, is, I keep getting, I kept, I told a guy um, in Oregon, I said, Jean, 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 Jean. And his name was Jean, and it, or Jean. He was from a different country. So it's was, it was pronounced with that accent. And I mean, what if I just didn't say it? And then the, perfect, the re releasing of the word comes right after. You know, so don't be afraid to let God grow you. Don't be afraid to step out and find where your keys are and where who, who who's supposed to unlock you. Don't be afraid to connect with amazing, awesome people. If maybe you're reading, I've read things and the anointing on the book gave me something I didn't have. I've read the word of God and I got something so great. God has connected me. The Lord can appear in your dreams. He wants to grow you. That's all I want to tell you today. And so don't be afraid about making a mistake. You're not a false prophet. If something you said was wrong and it didn't come to pass, like, oh, stop it, people. Cut it out. Like, you know what? You grow in this thing and we want to have room for growth. Okay. So, um, <laughs> oh, I said your real name. <laughs> she said, oh yeah, <laughs> praise God. The Lord is awesome. You guys. So if you haven't scheduled a one-on-one, -on -one, you really want to, uh, schedule one-on-one. -on -one. Um, oh yeah, that was funny. And your sister's name too. That was really cool. God is so awesome. Um, you guys, if you schedule your one-on-ones and get connected. Okay. So lifeline tnt.org. If the Lord calls you to sow an offering, um, go ahead and you can connect with us. If you want to connect with our, our free classes, we have them available to you because you guys are growing so mighty and we certify ministers and leaders and pastors. So make sure you connect that way too. So we're doing so many awesome things right now. I, it's almost mind boggling what God is doing. So love you guys dearly. I'll be in Arizona in a couple weeks too. And in Mexico next week and some awesome things. Oregon, we just had an awesome time in Oregon. Love you guys dearly. I will talk to you guys soon and God bless. Have a wonderful day.